group of contemporary Jew in the Menton Central, for where we visit the patient. It's a privilege uh, for me to warmly uh, welcome Professor uh, Leonard Zaks. Professor uh, Zaks from uh, Rwanda's uh, University is a social, a social psychologist as well as a methodologist with a special uh, interest in contemporary Jewish uh, studies. He uh, is the director of the Cohen Center for Modern Jewish Studies and also the director of the Steinhardt Research Institute at his uh, university. The uh, scholarly interest and in, uh, research of uh, Professor uh, Zaks are uh, very uh, wide, but over the last uh, several uh, years, he has mainly uh, focused on the social demography of the American Jewry, on the Jewish education in the uh, United States, and, and on the American Jewry Israel uh, relations. In the major uh, project, which uh, is attached to these uh, issues, and uh, in which Professor uh, Zaks uh, serves as a principal uh, investigator, is the longitudinal uh, study of the birthright of Israel. Uh, and it is uh, within uh, this uh, project uh, that he co-authored a very uh, well-received uh, book entitled uh, Ten Days of a Birthright Israel, A Journey in Young Adult uh, Identity. Uh, this book, out of uh, some 250 uh, publications of uh, Professor uh, Zatz, tells uh, the story of an uh, intensive uh, educational program uh, which is uh, designed to uh, connect these uh, young adults to uh, the heritage and uh, whether and uh, how this uh, program fulfills its uh, goals is uh, the topic uh, of the presentation uh, today. Professor uh, Zaks will uh, talk for about 30 to 40 uh, minutes and then uh, we'll open the floor for uh, questions and uh, discussion. I need to read the bear behind I apologize for that. I hope I'm understandable. Um, this is a lecture, uh, but uh, I'm pleased to uh, to be interrupted. If I don't want to be interrupted, I'll just continue talking. So if you're, if you don't understand or you have a pressing uh, question, uh, feel free to ask it. So what I'd like to do in the next 30, 40 minutes uh, is to talk about Tagalit uh, and the, the particular angle that I'd like to, uh, to take for today's discussion is the role that Tagalit is playing, the role that it could play, and the role of Jewish education of diasporans in general in changing the nature and structuring the nature of the relationship between the diaspora, diaspora communities, um, and, uh, uh, and Israel. Um, can you just, uh, before I get uh, too far in it, uh, I presume everyone knows of Tagleet. You listen to the radio occasionally, so you know you see the buses. Um, how many of you feel that you know a lot about Tagleet and how it operates educationally? So many of you. Okay, so. Um, apologies to you. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about how Tagli operates. Um, the, I'd like to start in framing uh, this by uh, taking this uh, this term. Uh, I think I reversed on the uh, on this. Uh, this thinks that it's English, so it has to do it in the reverse way. But she looks like Gola, that the denigration of, uh, of the Gola is an issue that, again, at least for diaspora Jews, uh, seems to have, uh, have re emerged, it's like a, a virus or a, uh, or a uh, uh, bacteria that uh, grows in, uh, in new forms. And uh, the recent controversy, I better stand here. I <laughs> uh, have to ask for extra pay for being the door person uh, one, as well as the speaker. Um, that um, the, this idea um, and the controversy that recently arose um, over advertisements trying to bring home Israelis or Adim who uh, are in uh, this state was premised on, this no on the notion 
that um, life in the diaspora, Jewish life in the diaspora, is impossible. Um, that uh, uh, to live in the diaspora is to be married to a non-Jew, um, is to celebrate Christmas, uh, is to uh, reject all of uh, Jewish tradition. So that's, uh, that's the denigration of the Gola from, uh, from this side of the ocean. Uh, from uh, the American side, the North American side, um, the issue um, is more political and uh, the debate has been about Americans distancing themselves from Israel and in particular the next generation uh, becoming disengaged from Israel, presumably uh, Presumably because uh, the politics of young American Jews um, aren't uh, and don't match uh, the politics uh, of Israel. Now, the absurdity of that, because what are the politics of Israel? If somebody could figure that out, uh, <laughs> they should get some kind of a, of a prize. But the idea is that uh, the diaspora and Israel have this tenuous uh, relationship. Um, the question that I want to try to answer today is whether Jewish and a special version of Jewish education, Israel education, uh, can play a role and can change that situation. Should we wait or not? One of, one of my mentors in graduate school um, gave me um, three rules for, for teaching. So the first one was always have a room that's too small for your class because that sense of intimacy will increase. The second was always pick a textbook that you don't like so that you can look really good by it, that they won't like, so that you can look really good. Um, and the third one is always start on time so that those people who come late really feel bad. <laughs> so I've got two out of the three covered today. Um, so for those who don't know about Tuglit or don't know the details of Tuglit, its original goals, and it actually, interestingly, for a program that's lasted, it's almost going to uh, celebrate uh, uh, bar uh, or bat mitzvah, um, is uh, to uh, reinforce uh, Jewish identity, uh, to enhance uh, about Israel, like Israel, and to promote a sense of peoplehood, Klal Yisrael. It's not a political program. In other words, it's not designed to create supporters of Israel or to ideologically uh, engage them. Uh, it is a Jewish identity and Jewish community building uh, program. How does it do it? Um, First of all, it targets 18 to 26 year old. Uh, the original goal was to target unaffiliated uh, Jews. Uh, it turns out most participants have some formal Jewish education. I'll show you that in a second. And it was to be non-didactic and experiential. And the central piece of the program uh, didn't actually start this way, but in part because of our research has become this way, that the central part of the program are uh, mifgashim, mostly with chayalim, uh, five or six of them who spend at least half, <clears throat> half of the 10 days um, with, uh, with the group.